And peace for the Hebrew people is not what we think of as peace. We usually think of peace as an absence of war, amen? amen. That's not what peace was to the Hebrew people. To the Hebrew people, peace meant somehow being whole, being together with yourself, with the people around you, and with your God. Peace was having righteous relationship with God, righteous relationship with all the people you knew. That was peace and having a deep awareness of yourself as being whole. That was peace to the Hebrew people, and it should be peace to we who are descendants of those Hebrew people, we who are Christians. When we turn to each other in the liturgy today and say, the peace of the Lord be with you, we're not talking about have a nice day. We're not talking about even exchanging a slight kiss. What we're talking about is that kind of peace, a righteous relationship with God, a righteous relationship with the people around us. That's what peace is. And that's what we come to find in that tiny whispering sound of God. We find that tiny whispering sound most often in prayer. And it is that prayer that lifts us up, that gives us the strength to go forward and to do what we know we need to do even when we are discouraged. And being a Christian, being a prophet, being someone who is aware of the need to spread our understanding of Jesus, being all of those things can be very discouraging at times because like Elijah, we look around and see that our world at times seems to be evil and the people in it at times seem to be evil and nothing seems to be going the way it should go. And so we are caught off guard and we want to say, forget it, I'll just get into my own little cave and be all by myself. But it doesn't work that way. Remember the last line of today's reading? When Elijah heard that tiny whispering sound, he hid his face in his cloak. Now who else do we know that hid his face in the presence of God? Moses. Moses hid his face in the presence of God. Elijah hides his face in the presence of God. But he listens to what God says, and he goes forward to do what he is called to do. He goes forward to preach to the people of Israel. He gets his mission together, and he goes out and does what God wants him to do. To do. Yesterday was the 66th anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. On Tuesday, we will commemorate the 66th anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki. In Hiroshima, at least 80,000 people died that day. 69% of the city was destroyed. Yes, the Japanese army 
and the Japanese Marines had headquarters in that city. Yes, there were military targets in that city. But to destroy a whole city in order to get those military targets is not something that we can do justly. And peace and justice always work together. The psalm today, our responsorial psalm, was from Psalm 85. It's a beautiful phrase in that psalm. The translation is, justice and peace will kiss. Isn't that lovely? Justice and peace will kiss. You can't have one without the other. Yesterday, when the bride and groom here were married and they gave a kiss to each other at the end of the ceremony, it wouldn't make any sense if one of them pulled back, would it? So when we speak about peace, we also have to speak about justice. And when we speak about justice, we always speak about peace. So if we want to have peace in our world, then we need justice first. And so when we speak about bombing with atomic bombs, we need to realize we cannot have justice and peace together. And so it is our task as Christians to pray to the Lord for peace for our entire world, to recognize that we cannot have justice in a world in which we use weapons of destruction of such force that everybody gets obliterated. Innocence and military people alike. Justice and peace will kiss. Or as Pope Paul VI said, if you want peace, work for justice. Today in your bulletin, you're going to receive a copy of the Michigan Bishop's statement about immigration. It's a statement coming from all the bishops of Michigan, including our own Bishop Hurley, asking us to reflect again about what immigration means, to do justice so that we can have peace with one another. Whether we are white or black, red, yellow or brown, we are all human beings, and we need to consider working with each other as such. When we do that, we have justice at work. When we have justice at work, there will be peace. So our task today and this week is to stop and look at ourselves and to realize, yes, we are the prophets of today. We are the Elijahs. And when we want to crawl into our caves and not go forth with the message of Jesus in our case, then we have to find the Lord in that tiny whispering sound of our inner being, speaking to us about the need to be Elijah today with the message of Jesus. If you want peace, work for justice.